Hi everyone, welcome back. Look at some more equations, let's see what's going on. First one that looks up here is quite different than what we are doing before because it's got this plus three up here not written over the side by itself. And I see student after student who go, I'm okay with equations and they go the opposite of the plus three is minus three and I do it to both sides and unfortunately they get the question wrong. I could go slowly through and show you why it's wrong but at the moment let's just talk about the technique. This is also showing you why it's wrong. There's actually that line there, that fraction bar, actually means a bracket. It means that whatever is above it has got a bracket around it, and whatever is below it has got a bracket around it. When you talk about BIM dash, or whatever you want to call it, BOM dash, depending where you're from, order of operations, the brackets, you can't just pull something out from inside the bracket. So let's have a look at what we can do. What controls that three is the plus and the bracket. I could write, actually write the brackets in there. This, that's what it actually means. Now this four here is controlled by that divide. So that little divide there controls the four. So I can move the four easier than I can move the three. So a lot of people get, you know, just get thinking, oh, I can move a three when you can't. So let's go back to this four here. How do I get rid of the divide by four? Talk about the opposites to both sides, obs, opposites to both sides, and the opposite of a, a, a divide by four is a times by four. So the opposite of the divide by four is a times by four. What's the purpose of it? When I times that by four on this side, and I balance up the scales, I'm always going to talk about the balancing up the scales. If I multiply this side by four, I multiply this side by four. And the purpose of it was, I can then go four into four goes once. So really I've got one bracket x plus three. So instead of having this four controlling all of that, now I've just got a one controlling it. Interesting part is one of that is just x, and one of three is just three. And if I want to, I don't even have to write that bracket there. Once I get rid of the divide by four. Let's have a look at it again. What's the opposite of the divide by four? Times by four. Can't just go subtract three, subtract three. Now that I've got this eight over here, so it's changed the whole question. First of all, we have to times everything by four. I do have a rule which is, get rid of fractions first. I'm always saying, get rid of fractions first. I've got all sorts of shortcuts for the higher level of year 12, even then I'm just nagging about, get rid of the fractions first. So now I've got what plus three is five. You could have done it in your head and just said it's a five, piece five plus three is eight. Or I can go take three from this side, take three from this side, opposites to both sides. The opposite of a plus three. What controls that three? The plus does. So how do I get rid of a plus three and minus three? And now the equation tells me the answer. I want it to say the answer is. And that's all we're doing with equations. Get it to tell us the answer. Eight take three is five. Now if we check it and see what's going on, what if you made a mistake? What if I was actually wrong? If I go back up to here and I replace an x by the five, I'll have five plus three when we divide it by four, five plus three, the original equation, when we divide it by four, has to equal two. Now I end up, end up with eight on four equals two, which is true. So you can actually check your equations. I can remember at school, I would just, at the end, if I had time left over, I'd check the answers. I often found I made a lot of stupid mistakes. So, same question again, got a subtraction, change the numbers, make it look a bit different. If teachers want to make it harder for you, they can put a negative in here. They can put an extra number there, but we'll look at that another day. So we can't get rid of the minus three by going plus three because it's controlled inside of that bracket. Do I really need to write those brackets there? Not once you understand that it is there. Mind you, a lot of people will do it without understanding it. Cannot go plus three, plus three because it's controlled. This two is not controlled. It's easier to remove. So what's the opposite of divide by two? Times by two. I times the left hand side by two, I times the right hand side by two. Let's have a look at what we've got. Two into two goes once. I just do this, I cross them out. I know they're not zero, be careful they're not zero because if that becomes a zero, you've got a problem with dividing by zero. So it actually is two into two goes once and two into two goes once and then you've got one over one is one. You can just cross them out. So once they're crossed out, I've just got the x minus three. So it saves me thinking about the brackets. And five, two is, two is a 10. Now I've got that minus three 
in a situation where I can, I can move it easily. Opposite of minus three. So there's nothing else controlling it. This has got a plus three to balance up the equation, and I got x equals 13. Again, I could check in the original equation, 13 take three, when I divide it by two, it's 10 over two, which is five, which is what I wanted it to be. So you could have guessed, you could have stood here and just guessed it was a 13. Now a bit different again. Sort of like that. There are so many shortcuts. Oh, not really. There's, there is a nice quick way, not a shortcut, there's a quick way of doing this when you're more confident. It says divide by three, I go times by three this side, I go times by three that side because they're the opposites. I just cross out the threes. I could go three and the three goes once. If I went three and the three goes once, I got one times two is two x. So if you look at what I did, I've just removed the threes and left me with the two x. And eight and four threes are 12. And now I've got two watts of 12. You could just write down six. I don't think any teachers will take off marks if you just went now, x is six, if you see the answer in your head. So we want you to be able to go efficiently and quickly on these. So what's between the two and the x as a times? If I divide this side by two, I divide that side by two. Two into two goes once, I don't have to write it. And two into 12 goes six times. Again, I could check it on the original. Let's put it back here. Two by six is 12. And when I divide it by three, I get the four. So you can always do that, except when they're horrible numbers and you've got no chance. One more, just for good measure. The opposite of divided by two is times two. If I times this side by two, I times that side by two. Two into two goes once. One times five is five. So all it did was remove the twos. And we're left with five x equals 20. Maybe your brain will go five fours of 20 and write the answer down. If it doesn't see that, or it's got fractions and negative that make it more difficult, there's a times between any two things. There's always a times, as long as there's not two numbers. So how do I get rid of the times of five? I divide this side by five, divide that side by five, and the quickest way to write divides that way. I do have students who want to write five x equals 20, and they write divide five, divide five. If you're one of those, it's okay, but when things get harder, it just becomes a mess. Let's have a look what's happening here then. Five into five goes one, so that's just an x. And five into 20 goes four. And again, I could check it. Five times by four is 20. When I divide 20 by two, I get 10 from the original question. Thanks for that. Uh, see you in the next video.